Good day traders. This is Rich with some PC action on the weekend. I'm here to just show you how my PC build went, some of the parts I used, and a little breakdown of what you can expect if you decide to make a new trading PC. Now, this wasn't something I took lightly. This is something I looked into for many weeks, actually many months. I do have a background in computers, but components and technology has changed so much that it took a lot of research to put this together, even though you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a piece of equipment, I was able to keep it under $2,000. And that's because of one major factor being the GPU or video card. But I'll get into that in a second. Hey, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video and comment on the video. So this will be a quick breakdown. I'm not going to get into too much detail here. Again, you, I called three or different three different uh, sites to have a computer built, and I averaged between 2,400 and 3,200 for a complete system. Pretty high end, had all the, some bells and whistles, um, but I feel like the motherboard was the one missing link, and possibly the video card that where they were trying to maybe make a little extra money and. Um, I decided to do it myself. I just decided I can do it. I can put in the time uh, and save some money as well. So I'll give you a breakdown of the parts. I'll give you a breakdown of the prices I paid. And these prices will change daily, hourly. And sometimes these pay, uh, components will go out of stock, let alone obsolete. So especially my video card, which is an older model. It's a GeForce. Uh, GTX 1080 Ti, which was a high-end video card, probably the highest-end video card back in 2017, 18, and then new chipsets came out and everything changed. But I still like it; it still works. I have it in my other computer, and I'll get into that in a second as well. So, decided to do it with a fractal design Meshify C case. I got it on Amazon for $99. They do not offer prime shipping, so I had to pay an extra $27, which included the tax. So it was like $20 plus seven on tax on the case. Again, you can spend $40 on case, you can spend $400 on a case, you can spend almost a thousand bucks on the case. It is nice, I did a lot of research on the case. You can kind of see how components, uh, my, you know, my cable manager is pretty simple. I don't really have much going on in here. I'll get close to it, but you can see like it's got this nice little um, where you can pull cables through down all along that bottom and it makes it a little bit easier to pull cables from behind um, it Includes two fans one and two. I did not get the rainbow colors the RGB whatever you want to call it and um, That's just the fans. I do have a little RGB going on in here, but I decided that wasn't the route I wanted to go and it saved me a few bucks, but if you want to create a gaming machine with RGB or a trading machine, you can definitely do it. And I do have some, so it kind of gives a little flair. And it does come with a, it's open right now, but it does come with a uh, tempered glass um, plate so you can see inside and all the things moving. It's kind of neat. And I'll show you that in a second. So I also had to buy, just put this out there, I bought Microsoft Windows 10 at 64 bit, uh, $149, bought that at Amazon, just an OEM. Key code, pretty much I downloaded um, Windows on a USB drive and installed it that way. It's a lot different nowadays. You don't need a DVD. You can install Windows in minutes versus like an hour or two sometimes. Um, the power supply, which fits down here, which is a modulator, uh, modular unit, so you can plug in as much as you want or as little as you want. I got the EVGA Supernova 850GA 80 plus gold for $150. Uh, I spent money on the uh, power supply because I didn't want any, pro you know, I do have power issues at my house. Um, being an older home, um, we have a lot of brownouts, blackouts, and I just want something that was going to withstand some voltage, even though I have a backup power supply and things like that. I just want something with a little quality. Little uh, standard, it's got a 10 year warranty, and if something did happen, I can talk to them and possibly replace it, even though I would never want to replace anything in this computer except for maybe memory. Um, 
Speaking of memory, that's the next thing. Uh, G Skill Trident Z RGB 32 gigabytes, two sticks. You can see them right one and two. Um, they light up um, 3200 megahertz. I spent 159.99 on that. Um, not too bad. I've bought memory many times over the years. Wasn't too too pricey. Something to consider if you do a build. Make sure you stick to the channels. There's, that's a quad. There's two channels in the, amongst the four slots, so make sure you do alternating. Uh, it will depend on your motherboard. But you can watch, again, I'm not a computer designer or anything like that, but you can watch tons of videos about step-by-step uh, -step builds and how you can do it. This is just showing what I created based on talking to trade station partners, uh, providers of computers, and what they recommend for trade station what is overkill, what is maybe a little underkill. And I did do some overkill here and there, but for the most part, my chip, which is the CPU uh, by Intel, I got it Best Buy, is a Core i9 10,900K, 10th generation, 10 core, 20 thread, 3.7 uh, gigahertz with 5.3 gigahertz turbo, uh, whatever all that means, it's fast and it's, Pretty much the same chip, but the X series on Intel's 10th generation was the one that was recommended to me, but I decided to save a little money and use this chip, which is really close because there's a lot more motherboards that work with this chipset versus the X series chipset. And I feel like you get pretty much the same bang for the buck or out of the money than you would if you did the X. So I paid a $520 for this chip um, and $31 in tax. Um, so if you put it all together, it's, it you know adds up pretty quick. Um, the motherboard, you know, I should probably should have talked about that first. This is the one piece that, from looking at all the different components on like PC parts picker or whatever dot com, was the one thing that stood out. I wanted something that was simple that had a lot that maybe I didn't need, but this motherboard had a lot of. Uh, good reviews as well as um, quality. And uh, this does have a couple of bells and whistles I don't need, but it's definitely something that's strong and this is important to me. I want a good quality motherboard that can handle overclocking a little bit, um, that can handle the heat. Um, there's all kinds of heat gauges or whatever you call them, the VRMs and uh, heat sinks and whatnot. So uh, the motherboard is a Asus. Let me see, where is it? Asus ROG Strix Z490 E Gaming. I paid $299 for it, plus $18 in tax. Um, if you're in a place where you don't have to pay tax, you can definitely save a lot of money. Remember back in the day when you could buy stuff and things were tax-free? Well, not anymore, unfortunately. Uh, so the motherboard is a pretty cool motherboard. It's definitely manageable, um, easy to set up. I met, if you watch my videos in the past, I mentioned hooking things up and these little guys down here were the my nightmare uh, before I started plugging things in. Those are the front end header display, like power reset LED switches that you need to hook up and like your audio down here. Um, this one was the kind of the pain. They have these like these fans with their little, their little headers that go in different spots, uh, but we'll get into that too. Heat sink. Um, I decided to go non-RGB on the heatsink. I want reliability and quality with a fan that can really cool things down when it needs to. I didn't need the whole water cooler thing with the rainbow colors again. Um, I got I got the colors I needed, I think. So not something I really need to add to the puzzle here. Um, the hard drive. So hard drives have come a long way, right? Space, we used to make things on one and a quarter 1.4 megabytes on those little floppy disks. Right here, there's two spots like this. One and two uh, holds M2 drives and they can hold to huge sizes. Currently, I just have one terabyte in there. Um, and on the back panel, you can hook up SSD cards or SSD drives um, relatively easily. And I, I plan on doing that, probably add a two or three gigger or two or three terabyte drive, which will allow um, for all these videos and stuff like that. So no big deal there. Um, that pretty much covers up the parts I used. 
Uh, again, the heat, the heat sink was $69.95 and the hard drive was $155.68. Uh, I'll give you a full price down below in the description of what I paid for each, as well as you know links that you can check out the products on. But if you do decide to build a PC for trading, um, this is a good place to start. Uh, Monday will be my first day trading with it, but I already set up the platform. I got everything going. It's ready to go. That's why I'm doing the video now. And um, I just didn't want to do another video, open it up, pull it out again. So I just want to get this one in there. So hopefully this came out pretty good. Uh, it will allow you to find the unit if you decide to go that route. And, you know, I'll do another video again in the, in the future as well as a po post on my uh, site that will describe my build out and what I went through. Um, it's really not that hard if you kind of give yourself a little time and have enough space to do it. Um, I definitely say probably between, I would say about 500 to $1,000 by building it myself. Uh, I mentioned the video card. You can see it there, the GeForce. Um, originally that was a pre-purchase. So you can buy video cards for 200 bucks, but you can buy video cards for like $1,500 nowadays. So um, definitely a savings there. And that was the main reason I think I did it myself because I knew I was gonna save like $500 on a video card. That I didn't need some other shop to build for me. Uh, so let's give a little test here. I'll turn down the light behind me and you guys can see it in action. So this is how it looks like when it's in the dark or in sleep mode, but when you put the magic on, things, this, this was my first post um, the other day and I got kind of excited. So all I really lit up on top of what it was, was the cooling temperature and um, the mother of the motherboard and those memory sticks. They kind of give some lights. Eventually I'll give a little bit more, um, maybe my video card will have a little bit more light and that's all I really need. So that's it. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe and I'll be more willing to talk to you on um, YouTube or, or comments or whatever. And we can figure out a system that might work for you, save you a few bucks, as well as the build out process. Not too hard. I would recommend it. I would do it again. Um, obviously, I think I could do a little bit better of a job with my cable management. But just like everything else, you just got to keep on grinding. And um, we'll figure it out next time. Have a good one. Talk to you soon.